Hello, welcome back to Go On The Run. Thanks for your patience. Um, this video is a little bit late, but uh, I've been pretty busy. Anyway, today we're going to wrap up what we're doing with X509 certificate. Not because we've done everything. There's never our objective anyway. These topics are really, really deep. We're never gonna get to the bottom of it anyway. But I think we've learned enough to see from the beginning how certificate works, how to do digital signatures, how the problem with establishing trust between two entities that don't know each other. And then today we're gonna to clean things up, make a certificate that is self-signed. So we're gonna pretend that we're a CA cert, our root CA. So we're gonna use our CA cert now to create a certificate for a server. So that server, when it is listening and serving connections, when clients connect, it can offer those clients a certificate and say, oh, this is who I am. And those clients are going to be able to look at that certificate and say, oh, I trust you or I don't trust you. And those clients are going to be able to do that because they're going to be able to use the CA cert to say whether or not they should trust that um, server. There's a lot to cover, but before we get into it, please hit that thumbs up button for me. And if you haven't subscribed, subscribe. The reason for the thumbs up and subscribing and leaving comment that helps the channel because the YouTube algorithm uses those data points to determine if when other people search for stuff on let's say security or goal line, whether they're gonna see this video. And if you're enjoying it, I hope that you'd wanna share it with somebody else. As a matter of fact, if you haven't shared this with one other person already, please just share it with somebody. If you're in this field, you probably have friends also who are in this field and would probably like this information. Ask them to come check it out and subscribe too. All right, so let's jump into it. All right, so like I said, this is going to be our example where we pull together the things that we were doing before. And so we're going to write a CA cert. So um, let's go on to part five. And what you see is I have a directory for um, exercise one already. And let's pull up my Visual Studio Code editor. And I just have like the module file. And other than that, our example, our directory is empty. So I'm going ahead and create a main.go file inside our example directory. Uh, I need to actually do main.go. Now, because we have quite a bit of code to go through, um, I'm going to tell you what I'm gonna write and then write it. As a matter of fact, I don't even want a main.go file here. I want a directory that says my CA. All right, and this is where I'm going to keep all that code that related to our CA um, certificate authority. Now, in the previous example, I call this directory issuer. It's still essentially the same thing, right? The CA authority is the issuer of certificates. You can think of it as issuers of identities, right? Because we said, what is a certificate? A certificate is nothing than a digital identity. So I'm just renaming it from issuer to now um, CA and um, to my CA. So that's what we're gonna call it. And so let me write some code real quick and then you can pause it at any time and type it out or you can just literally wait until at the end and then just write the code. Or you can just pause this video, go to GitLab and look at the code. But here it goes. Okay, so what do we have? We have a main program and I have a variable and I give it a default name of my CA. Um, what I'm going to do is remember when we create a certificate, we have two things. We have the certificate, but also that certificate is associated with a key, right? Um, we have the public key that's gonna be part of the certificate, but then you have the private key, which is kept separate and that is also used to signing other certificate. So we need to create two things. We need to create the CA cert file and the private key. Now, why do we want to have those in files? Well, because we're going to rerun our CA multiple times to create multiple client certificates, right? And so we, when we run it the first time, if we don't have a private key and a certificate for the root CA, we're going to create it. But then the second time we run it or subsequent time we run it, we want it to just reread that information that we already created. Because if it keeps creating new certificate and new file as the root CA, then none of our clients will be able to talk to each other because each one of them is going to look like if they come from a different certificate authority. Uh, we sort of went over this already. So nothing new. The previous time we would write it out, but we didn't read it back in. Now we're going to read it back in. So that's where I'm collecting that information for which file to read. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to call the CA sort file, like my CA.pem. That's going to be the certificate file. And then the key file, I'm going to call it like my CA that 
dash key dash pem something like that by default when we create a sort of kit it's in der format but then that's like a binary format we can then save it or encode it in pem using the pem encoding package and the pem package is part of the encoding package just like how you have json you know um comma separated value all those other encoding pem is just another way to encode things so what I want to do then is call this function to say initialize my certificate authority based um, using this file or this base file name. This function is going to do all the every lifting. It's going to check and see if these files exist and if they exist, do they have certificates and they have the private key? If they do, read them in. If they don't, then create them for the first time. And then of course, if I can do any of that, if I can initialize my certificate authority, then I lock fatal because there's nothing else for us to do. So I'm going to split up the code because, like I said, we have quite a bit of code to write. And so let me go now and create the a second file where I'm going to have information about sort of our certificate authority. And this file is the file I'm going to call, you know, issuer.go, which is sort of like what we had before. And in this file, it's going to be the same package main. And we're going to have the function, you know, init ca, um, root ca is what I call it. And it's a file name and it's a string and it returns an error message. And so we can return nil for now. So this is basically, basically all we need here. We can go back here and save it and we can see that it pulls in the logros package because now it doesn't have that error. So, so that's good. All right. So now what are we doing in this file? Like I said, what we want to do is be able to um, create a key or at least read it in if it exists um, if it doesn't exist then create it and then also create a certificate so we want to do something like maybe do it call init key and give it the same file name to read the key from or create the key and in it um, the root C is cert right we want to be able to do that so if you notice, we have these two things that always go together, the key and the certificate. And that's going to be the case regardless of whether we're doing the root certificate or we're doing a client certificate. When we're asked to create a certificate for a client, we still have to create a key for that client, right? Because the client is going to need that key for the certificate is only saying, this is my identity, this is who I am. But in terms of encrypting information and so on, the client would still need a private key. So always you're going to have this idea of a private key and the certificate. The certificate is what the client would present to other devices or other users, but a private key they're going to keep to themselves. And we went over how the private key is used and all this other stuff, right? If you're jumping in now, you certainly want to go back to the beginning, the very beginning of this section and start watching from part one all the way up. Okay. So with that in place, what I'm going to say we should do is we should create a new type. Now we've seen all these before. Now I'm using as my key type, I'm specifically saying this key is a RSA private key, but I could have used um, crypto, that private key. And then um, later on, when I actually go to create the actual object, the concrete object, then I can say what I want to use RSA or DSA as my key type, um, because RSA, DSA, all those other key, they implement the crypto um, private key interface. So um, really, um, so, but here I'm being specific. You don't have to. I'm just giving you that note. So, okay. So now that I have this thing called sort info, what I think we should do is actually just implement these as method on the sort info. But not only that, when we call to initialize or root CA, we should store that as a variable in within this package, right? So the application have it to reuse. So what I've done is just created a variable, package variable for root CA info, which is after we finish initializing this, it's going to be available for us to reuse. With this in place, let's move on to exercise two. Now we could run this and it's not going to do anything exciting. All we can do is run it to say that, oh, we have something that actually run and doesn't have any error, um, you know, the infrastructure is in place. Well, it's a good thing we run it because uh, no file. Oh, that's because I need to be in this directory and we run it. And yeah, there's nothing that's wrong or anything. So that should run. Okay, let's go back up um, 
and clean up and then we're going to call this exercise copy this call it exercise 2 and we're going to continue building it out okay this is the exact same code that we wrote in exercise 1 the only thing I've added is the comments so feel free to pause look at that or go copy it all right so now let's implement the rest of the code for this init key first thing I want to do is to change this a little bit and say that we should get the error message here since this returns an error message and we should check it and if for whatever reason that we can't um, initialize or create our key then we should return that error message all right so now we've taken care of that now let's go implement this so for a key like I said one thing we want to do is to be able to check if we have a key already All right, so the, what is the code I've written? Well, we get create a file name for the key. So it's gonna be based off of that name that we're given. And then we try to open the file and read the contents of it. If we can read the contents, remember this would be in PEM format, because it's text, right? We're gonna store everything in just text format. It's just easy to see, paste in the email and so on. So this would have been PEM format if we could read it. But if we, if we can read it, we wouldn't have an error, in which case we will handle it before below. But since we have an error, it means that the file most likely doesn't exist. We can just give some information that we couldn't open the file or find a private key in that file. So we're gonna create it. So we're gonna call our create key function. If you remember, we had this function before, pretty simple function, it's not here yet, but we're gonna paste in the same code from before of how to create a file. And the only difference, create a key, the only th difference is gonna be that we're gonna give it the file name for it to write the key out to. So that's how we're gonna um, get and make sure that we have the key stored in a file because when we create a key, we'll always just write it out to a file. And then of course it's gonna return that key and we're gonna save that key. If there's an error, well, we just return that. Now, if we can, if we are able to read the file or open that file, then we should decode the contents of that file, which is in PIM and basically parse it from PIM back into a private key. So now what we have, we can decode our bytes that we read from the file, which is in PEM format. We can use PEM decode, which is going to return a block and actually not error, but rather um, the rest of the file, but we don't have anything else. So we should take this out. We don't, it's not an error that it returns. It's actually um, the rest of the bytes. So we don't care about the rest of the bytes because we know that in our file, there's just gonna be one sort of gate or private key, one private key. So there's no rest of bytes to worry about. And then we're gonna to try to parse those PEM decoded bytes um, or the PEM decoded bytes into, you know, a um a private key and as you can see this parse function returns a private key and an error so that's pretty much it in terms of being able to read back in a private key that we have stored in a file the only thing left to do now is to create the private key All right, so, oh, no new variable, so you don't need that. All right, so let's review this very quickly. Uh, let's see, what are we missing? Oh, we're missing this, okay. So we create the key here, pretty simple. We just, these are just error handling, so I'll ignore those. Once we have a key, we can marshal it or basically take that key and turn it into some bytes, which is in DER format. Once we have the bytes in DER format, which is this, we can then take that and give it to this PEM block, which is just a set of bytes. And the PEM block is going to encode, the PEM encoder is gonna encode those into PEM format. So we create a block, PEM block, 
with that information and the type we want to give it, which is that string. We plot, we talk about PEM encoding already and how you can put type here, which is any string. It doesn't really use it, but these are the values that most people expect. And you will see that oh, from here, it tells you that oh, when it um, marshal a private key, it expects basically that you would use this, this string for the um, PEM encoding. And so it does exactly what we do, and we try to encode it. If we fail to encode it, again, error handling, Otherwise to that, we now have the PIM encoded bytes in our buffer, and we just use this IOUtil write file. Now you could have just um, encoded, open the file and encode it directly to the file and then close the file. Many ways to do that, but eventually we just have that information written out to the file anyway. So at this point, we should be able to run our code and get a private key for our CA cert. So let's do that. And as you can see, um, it did not find a existing file, so it created this file for us. And if we do bat, for example, or cat, if you have cat, you can see that, oh, yep, that's all it is. And this just says beginning of this file. That's it, all right? So you can do cat, my, pem, and there is it. There's the file. And bip, that's good. All right, so let's clean up our screen and let's rerun this program now. Since we have a, um, file notice it doesn't do anything it just rereads the file we don't know that but we know it's always certainly not creating it and we don't have an error for it reading it back in so let's continue now with exercise three okay for exercise three what we're going to do is now implement our init root cert um, function and that is again stuff that we've seen before so uh, let me speed up to type in here a little bit but it's stuff that you've seen um, we've done it in the previous exercises, so we really don't need to spend the time you see me typing it at um, typing speed. Okay, so so far we haven't done much. File name, where I'm going to expect to read my root CA from, um, sort from, or I'll create it in there. And so we do the same thing. We try to read from the file. If we fail to read from it, that means we don't have a um, certificate in that file or the file doesn't exist. And so we're just going to create a new self signed certificate and save it to the file. Of course, to create a certificate, we need a private key. And so, and especially since we sign it ourselves, well, we need our private key to sign it. So that's why we had to create the key, the private key first. And of course, if we fail to create our certificate, we should return that error message up to the caller. Um, otherwise, we should try and do what? If we couldn't read from the file, if we could read from the file, then we should now have in buff, which is this variable, we should now have PEM data. And now we can use that to decode our certificate into DER format. And so essentially what I'm doing here is I'm saying, oh, try to read from the file. If there's an error, then create a new certificate. If there's no error, then we have PEM data, decode that. And then once I decode it, remember with the decode function, it return the block and the remaining bytes. But we don't have remaining bytes, so all we need is the decoded bytes, which are now back in DER format. The reason why we want the DER data, which is also what is going to be returned when we create a certificate, is that we can then take that and create a certificate that we can store in the CI. If you remember, when we create a certificate, it always returns a slice of bytes that in DER format. It doesn't actually return a certificate, which is very different than when we generate a key. When we create a key, we actually get back a private key. When we create a certificate, we do not get back a certificate. We get back a slice of bytes in DER format. So we're going to need to marshal those DER bytes into a certificate. This is going to make sense when we implement this function next. So let's do that. Well, of course, um, let's pretend that we already have the DER bytes. And so now we're going to say ci.cert is equals to, let's do error, and we're going to do x509.parse the certificate. And parsing the certificate is this ASN1 data, which is actually the DER data. So we just have to parse that out. And whatever error we get as a result of parsing that, we'll return it. If we don't get an error, no problem. We store that certificate in our object there. And so if you look at this function, it returns two things. So 
So now let's write our create certificate function. All right, so what would this, does this function look like? Um, this function, if you remember, looks something like this. So I'm gonna copy some code in. We have our issuer, which is going to be the certificate representing our issuer. We're going to set a new int, which is a serial number on that, for that certificate. We need to set the valid before and um, end time, the time range. So this is how we set, we get the current time. We set that as a not before today. And then we go like a year or two out. Now, since this is our own CA, maybe we should probably do like 10 years or something like this, because we're gonna be creating multiple certificates. And then we also want to be able to set a name for this on this certificate, all right? And so for that, that's gonna be our own issuer name. Now, if you remember, the issuer name we were using, which was a variable up at the top, well, now we will just put it right here. We call it Omni Trust, I think is what I was using, Omni Trust Inc. All right. And before we were just using a variable, I'm literally copying the code we've had before. And so the next thing we did was to say that we have all this information. Let's now create the certificate. So we call X509 create certificate. We give it a random number generator and we give it this certificate as a template. The next value is the parent, but since this is a self signed certificate, signing its own certificate, the template and the it, this parent are the same. We went through this before. And then the key, this is gonna be the public key for the, um, the template or the subject. And then this is the private key of the parent. But in this case, it's all for the same certificate because it's a self signed certificate. So we just reuse that. And then we check for error and all that good stuff and we return an error message. Now, at this point, previously, we would consider this um, our create certificate, self signed certificate used to return at this point, right? It would return the DER bytes. But what we want to do is to write this out to a file. So we're going to export the certificate to this file name and using DER format, we want this function to take the DER bytes and turn it into PEM data. And of course, if we fail, we're going to return um, an error message why we fail. Otherwise, we should just simply say, return the DER byte and whatever the last error is. And that is all for creating our certificate and you know saving it out of file. The only thing that's left to do now is to write this function that actually encoded to a PEM file, which we already know because we have been encoding things to PEM file, um, like our private key. All right, so that looks to be correct. There's one error somewhere here. And where is that? Oh, this guy, take this out. And so if I save everything, and we go back down here, so bytes buff. So maybe um, actually I can say there's a DER bytes. But again, we've done this before, just a different way of writing it out to a file instead of using an intermediate um, bytes buffer, we just use, a, use the file itself and just encode to the file directly. But so far, this should now give us our server cert in a file and plus our fully initialized source cert info once this function call and return successfully. So let's go to exercise three directly. Clean up, let's go down to my CA and let's run again. And we should see that our, um, because we already had our private file from before, it just reused that, read it in, and since it did not find a certificate, it created one. But if we rerun it, it should find that certificate it just created, so it does nothing. So this is perfect. This means that oh, we can run this over and over, and the very first time, it creates the certificate and file. And so there we go, we have our certificate. And again, if we do cut on my ca.pem, we should see that oh, we have a certificate, and we still have our key from before. All right, so let's move on to exercise four. So in exercise four, we want to introduce the idea 
of having um, creating client certificate. So for that, we need to have information about the client. So we'll just take the client name and that is it. Um, and that's gonna allow us to create a certificate. So we'll say client name is whatever the host name for that client is. And we'll have this be the parameter that describe or allow you to specify the client's host name. And then once we have that, we're just gonna call a function with that client host name to create a certificate. And again, we're writing it out to a file. We're not writing anything out to standard output. So we're gonna say create client CA and this will take the client name, create a certificate, write it out to a file with that client's name. And then if we have some error message, well, of course we're going to exit the program. So just so we don't keep growing very uh, large files, um, uh, what I want to do is create a new file and I'm going to call it client.go. So then we have package main and then we have this function that we, we're going to call create client CA and it take the client name, which is a string and it returns an error message. And there we go. So let's save that. And the first thing we should do is to ensure that our client name is valid. So we should check the length of that. And if it's equals to zero, then we should, you know, return an error message. If the client name is valid, then what we should do is create a client info, which again is going to be a sort info object, right? Because we still need for a client to have a private key and a certificate. So we have wrapped it up nicely. So let's get a variable for error here going so that we don't have create variables over, over, over and over. And in terms of where we're gonna write the private key for this client, it's gonna be along the same line, right? We're gonna create a new file name that is the client name, plus we're gonna tack on minus key.pem. So if the client name is host5a1 or something like that, then there's gonna be the base for the key um, and the certificate file name. All right, so now that we have that, then we should totally initialize our key. So we have the client info that key, and that is gonna be initialized by calling this guy and calling create key. But we already have create key function, which takes a file name and it returns a key or an error. So since it returns a private key, uh, let's go. Since it returns a private key and error, we can go ahead and initialize this. So that's pretty easy. And we know that how this guy is going to save it. For the clients, we don't need to read back in the key. That's why I'm not doing anything like trying to read in the key for a client. It was only for the server, for the CA, that we need to reuse the key over and over. But every time we call for a client, instead of we're given the same client name, we'll just overwrite the file or fail to write to that file, as the case might be. But we don't need to read that back in. And of course, we'll do some, some error checking. If we can write this out and we can successfully create the client key, the only thing left for us to do now is to you now initialize their, um, create their certificate. ERR is equals to um, init client cert uh, with the same file with the client name. And then if we can successfully do that or not, we just return whatever that error message is. And so the only thing left to do is to write that function init client cert and it takes a string client name so let's review to create a client certificate is create a new science client certificate get back the der bytes if you get that back then export it now in terms of the in it creating the sign um certificate that is very easy is function uh, as matter of fact once again, we can go steal some of this from here. Again, we don't need everything, but let's see if we can steal this, copy this, take it over here, paste it. And so we created a signed certificate, not a self signed certificate. We have the client name and we have the key for that client and we're going to return the bytes and so we're going to call this not issuer but rather the client and if you remember the first certificate is the template you know if we hold this over there 
assume it wants to give me some help. It doesn't want to give me too many errors. Okay, so let's see what it's complaining about. I had to save to import some things. So if you look at this, it's the template, which is for the client, and then the parent. So the parent in this case is going to be our root CA, which we already have that cert, right? And then the public key is going to be the key that's being passed in for this client, right? So we can call this client key if we like. So let's call that client key. Um, I don't want to do it there. Client key. And then I can do client key. As a matter of fact, um, we should just pass in the public key that we need alone for the certificate as a pointer. So we just need a public key. And then here we need the private key for the um, root CA. So that's going to be root CA info that key. And once we have this in DR format, again, we, um, oh, we can actually call export cert um, within this function. So um, hmm. we kill two boards with one stone. So we really don't need to do that here. Hmm. Perfect. So that takes care of everything for us. All right. So uh, let's see, what are we missing? Oh, we need to call this now with address of our key that um, oh, for the client cert, we should just pass in key. Um, here, we should just say that all, all we need is the public key. And then we should call it with um, client info address that, 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 public key. All right. So that seems to be it. We don't have any errors. So this seems too good to be true. Let's run this. And what we should get now is both the private key and the certificate for a client. So this is exercise four. So let's here. So there we go. Go up one more. Go on to exercise four. And then we go into my CA. And then we run it and I'm going to run it with help this time. And so, okay, we have a bunch of CN undefined. So let's save that. And okay, where am I now? Create sign sort. Okay, so the file name, uh, file name is going to be, oh, I don't want to use this as my client name. Rather, I want to use CN and my file name is going to be fn colon equals to CN plus um, PEM for the circuit name. And what does it complain about here? Um, CN, CN, CN. Yep, this is CN. So why is that complaining? Um, straight, oh, this is wrong. Language is definitely there language dyslexia there okay so cn that okay fn declare but not used um why is that oh because we actually will need to say what the certificate name is here um we're going to use that so then here we have what there declare but not use okay so we don't actually care to return the circuit bytes because um, we simply um, write it out to the file so let's simplify this it just returns an error and it writes it out to there there and then we don't need this and we don't need this and we don't need this and we save this and we go back clean up rerun okay sorry to uh, i still have some errors so here we go 
fix that. All right, so my system is pretty slow right now. So I have to end the video here, uh, make it two parts. So the first part is gonna be where we complete our CA and then the next one is when we generate certificate for our client and use them to and use to create a server and a client application. So let's see if this works now. Okay, so there, there it goes. And let's say client and let's say host underscore um, host that A1, for example, doesn't matter. And run this and what we should see is that we have a private key and a host key for our host. So we can certainly see that within here. So we have, here is our private key for that host and there's the host key for that host. And we still have our certificate private or CA private key and our CA cert, but we didn't have to redo those because they weren't recreated. Because if you look at this, it ends in C9YT and that should be the exact same value that we have here, C9YT, because it's not being recreated. Okay, so we see that how this is didn't change. So okay, the video is pretty long, so I need to stop it here and post this as one part and then uh, I record the remaining exercises in a separate video.